Buddy, you're an idiot. You are an idiot. You are an idiot. No. No. For the guy that's the worst player in history. No. A crushing blow. <laughs> I'm um, I'm really stupid. Two stories. So this is years ago. I live in a really rough neighborhood, and around midnight, I park outside my apartment, and I realize, oh, I have a flat tire. I could just wait until daylight to take care of it, but instead, because I'm stupid, I'm like, well, no time like the present. So I get to work on changing my tire, and as I do, I notice three guys in the distance. They look at me and stop and kind of talk with one another and look at me again. Looks kind of sketchy. Well, whatever. I keep on working. Give me your wallet, motherfucker. says the guy with the knife, and that is exactly what I should do in this situation. But I say that having a decade to think it over. At the time, I had about one second. I swear I would have been scared if I had enough time to be scared. You know what I do instead? I make a noise that sounds something like, and I smack the knife away and I just run. This is not at all an act of bravery. I'm just too stupid to do the right thing. Do not do what I did. A few minutes later, I look through my precious wallet, the one I refused to give up. The wallet contained four bucks. I did this for four dollars. And a couple of highly valuable documents. You really can't overstate the value of a Kroger Plus card. When you have a Kroger Plus card, it's like every day's a sale. Here's the other story about how stupid I am. The one time I ever played poker at a casino. I bought in for a hundred bucks, the lowest amount I was allowed to buy in for. That's a lot of money. I didn't want to lose it. Immediately, I was the big blind and then the small blind, so I was down to 93 bucks. I refused to bet. I just waited for the perfect hand and waited. And oh God, here come the blinds again. I realized that I was just paying money to sit there. I was going to lose it all if I just kept going like this. So I got to make a move. Oh shit. Oh shit, I have pocket aces. Is, is there a speed between zero and light speed? I don't know. Who could say? I'm, I'm all in. All in. Holy shit, I won. I won. I just made 200 bucks by playing cards. Ooh. Okay, now I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I have a straight. Nobody ever has a straight. That's like one in a billion. This is amazing. I just won. There's more money. Cards. I'm over 300 bucks. Cards. I'm gonna bet I'm on cards. Three 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 is good, right? Which way am I going? I don't know. Who cares? What does anything mean? I don't know. Wait, what? What just, what just happened? I don't know. I just have what? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's all gone. I had just gone from $100 to $300 to nothing in seven minutes. Now that story is completely unremarkable to any regular casino player. Losing a hundred bucks wasn't going to break me. But at that table, I had nothing to do but sit there and be a scared idiot. And that's the difference. The poker table was so much scarier than the knife. Because at the table, I had nothing but time to marinate in my own dread. I'm just too dumb and too scared for poker. I can't even handle a hundred bucks. And I've seen the faces of the people who are trying to handle several million. It's like watching someone else's nightmare. 575,000. Now to Matt Affleck. With pocket aces. Hello, pocket aces. You go, Matt. And Matt, on the button with a re-raise to do hobble. Tricky pocket jacks. Raise. And he says re-raise himself. And Matt just with the call. Flop of 1097, Affleck still good with his aces. Do Hobble picks up a gut shot? Well, he does make the call. Big pot now, and we could have a big change in the pecking order. Turn card is a queen of diamonds. Do Hobble now with an up and down straight draw. That's aces still good, though. Lord. He says all in and makes the call. And the nines. The king, right? I'm shocked by the call on. Look at the pot. Affleck on the brink of becoming the huge chip leader. Duhamel, if he gets lucky, would be an overwhelming chip leader. Affleck way ahead. One card away from putting a huge hurt on Duhamel. Everyone on pins and needles here at the Rio. This will be the biggest river card of the tournament. A defining moment here late at this main event line. Jonathan Duhamel. Just wants to disappear inside that hood if he could. Matt Affleck is going to have 41 million chips or no chips. He needs to dodge a king, jack, or eight. The river card. Like thunder.
thunderstruck. Last year, the Netflix so close to the prize. He had overcome some earlier setbacks, only It's as if he's in shock. It's as if he can't leave. Chapter 1. Why do I play against smart people? At the poker table I play like a donkey, which is to say I make bad decisions, I have really horrible ideas, and I generally lose all my money. And that's actually a really fun thing to be, a donkey, because if you never learn anything, then even the most simple things are really fascinating. I highly recommend it. That's true in life as well. Anyway, one thing that I find fascinating about poker is that you can find out exactly which cards somebody has just by looking at kind of how they behave and what they do. So we're playing Hold'em Poker, all right? There's my cards, there's your cards. Mine are great, yours are shit, but that's just for now. That could all change once the community cards hit the table and you have more to work with. So maybe I want to bet a lot while I'm still strong and try to shove you out of the hand. And you're like, yep, but what if I don't bet enough to push you out? What if I just bet a little bit? You're like, nah, hell, it'll cost nothing to play this. So you barely limp in, paying the minimum amount. And I'm thinking, you probably have shit. Here comes a flop, you have a straight. Two, three, four, five, six. I see those three cards on the table and I see there's danger of you having a straight. You might have a three or a five or both. And suddenly I'm not so impressed with my king, so I don't bet anything. I decide to let you tell me what's up. Okay, so you bet big, and I'm like, yep, yep, you treated your cards like shit until these other shitty cards at the table. I don't think so. I'm out. Just based on how you behaved, I, a dumb guy, correctly guessed that you had either a 3 or a 5, or maybe both. Now that was a really basic example, but there are players out there who can do this on a level that, to people like me, is absolutely terrifying. Meet Daniel Negreanu. Radar goes up. You got pocket eights over there? How does he do it? Time and again. Oh, and I fold, but did you have ace king? No? You didn't have ace king? You had aces or something? No, you didn't have aces. You had like jacks or queens or something like that? Is that what you have with a spade? That's what you have? Jacks or queens with a spade? Oh, I got it! Ha, he smiled! I'm sorry if it's too much, but I can't help it. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I think he's got? Aces. That is uncanny! <laughs> I think he's got two aces. Wow. <laughs> Spooky nine, I was like. <laughs> Some kind of nine in hand, right? Like king nine or... King nine? You're a sick human. I did it again! Let me turn three threes over here. Daniel just called Doyle's hand. Doyle flopped a set of threes. And Beautiful. he says it again! You did you have a set of threes? No. You'll know someday. Someday. I'm gonna watch the show. You might have, like, kings, I guess. You have kings? How scary is this, really? Yeah, I thought that's the only hand I you could have was two kings. My guess is you have a pair of jacks, correct? Yeah? Yeah. You had the best hand then. Jacks? He had like nines or something. Jacks? He had like nines or something. Jacks? He had like nines or something. Eight of diamonds, that'll be exciting. One time he even did it to the dealer. <laughs> Turn. Eight is the eight of diamonds and Daniel makes it straight. <laughs> he said eight of diamonds and eight of diamonds came. Amazing. Twice in a row. The river, jack the diamonds. Jack of Diamonds! <laughs> There's only one Daniel Negreanu, but if you're an amateur, there are so many players out there who are so much better than you that they may as well be Daniel Negreanu. My advice is to just play as stupid as you want to because it won't really matter. Not mattering is a lot of fun. Enjoy it. Heads up poker is another word for one-on-one -on -one poker. It's horrifying. You can't afford to wait around. You have to put big money on horseshit hands you hate to play. There's nowhere to hide. If you're lucky, it won't last too long. For Andrew Feldman, it's lasting two hours. The lead has gone back and forth between himself and Andy Frankenberger, and now Feldman is way down. He's gotta move fast. And he does. He has a chance at making a flush, and he moves all in. Frankenberger is cool and collected. Feldman is having a little bit of a moment. He does a little weird butt dance and prays for a spade. Spade, 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 spade. But we'll see if it works yes. out. It's a nine of spades. And he gets it. Feldman is back from the dead. He's doubled his chips, and now he's within striking distance of Frankenberger. He has momentum, but what he doesn't have is water. And you have to have water if you want to be the champion. 
A couple minutes later, before any table cards have been dealt, Feldman puts in 30,000 chips. Frankenberger raises 110,000. Feldman re-raises 235,000. Frankenberger calls. The flop comes. Feldman bets another 95,000. Frankenberger calls that, too. He is going to make this call. Can wow, you believe it? Wow, Mike. Wow. It that, doesn't seem possible. That is incredible. The announcers are going nuts, and here's why. Neither of them have shit. Their cards are worth far more upside down than they are right side up. The turn card comes and nothing changes. Neither player has a damn thing. This time, Frankenberger doesn't bet anything more. He checks. See, by not betting, Frankenberger is acting like he has something. Because when you have something, you're trying to act like you don't have something. So it's like a, like a meta bluff, like a bluff inside a bluff. Now, experienced poker players would say, well, like, yeah, no shit, this happens all the time. What I would say to them is that I'm very basic, and it's very easy to impress me. Feldman stays gutsy. He does make a move. He bets another 165000 He has absolute junk in his hand, and now he's bet half his chips on it. That wasn't the most confident bet in the world, but we know he's got a 4-6. Does Frankenberger? And since Frankenberger doesn't have anything, it seems like that should be more than enough to scare him off, right? This isn't a still image, this is video. I didn't mess with it at all. He's the Terminator. This is just what he's like. What's he doing? We're seeing now, but... What's Frankenberger doing? He, he, he's coming over the... He's top. raising him! He has he done has it! He's raised him! And that is just too much for Feldman, who immediately folds. But you know what really kills him? He's... This is... And he's so amazing! Frankenberger shows him his cards. That's so cold-blooded. He shows him he had absolutely nothing. What just happened? Now Feldman has to sit there marinating in the knowledge that he got scared out of half his chips by pretty much nothing. And remember what I said? You have to have some water if you want to be champion. I've asked for water like half an hour ago, please. I mean, this is just not right. Can I have the water, please? I've asked about half an hour ago. What, how long do I need to wait for some water? It's ridiculous. No, but I, I mean, how many times do I need to ask? It's just an absolute joke. A few minutes later, Feldman is dealt a king-queen. He shoves all in, Frankenberger calls, and unbelievably, Feldman is the 71% favorite, not only to win this hand, but to take the lead. Andrew Feldman, who's been sputtering and sputtering and sputtering, <laughs> has a great opportunity to become chip leader in this heads up battle. Feldman begs for a queen to make a pair, just for good measure. Queen, put a queen there. Come on, just one of those. He's seen a queen. He wants a queen. Instead, Frankenberger has a chance at a straight. But Feldman's hand is still the winner for now. If he wins the hand, he takes the lead. If he loses the hand, he goes home. Look at how much fun he's having. Oh. Needs a seven or a queen. The board paired twice, they would split the pot. But right now, Feldman well out in front with a great shot to double up here and take the lead. A fairly harmless ace hits the board. He has to survive one more card. If it's a queen, Frankenberger makes his straight and wins. It cannot be a queen. Anymore. Must be a queen or a seven. It's the only thing that'll do it for Frankenberger. Nothing else but you know what? Feldman did ask for a queen. Has to catch a queen. Not long after that, Andrew Feldman retired from poker. I hope he found some water. You have to have some water if you want to be champion. And you gotta hand it to Andy Frankenberger. He deserved this time. <laughs> Chapter 3. Why can't they let me live? In 2003, an unknown online poker player came out of nowhere to win millions of dollars and become World Series of Poker champion. His name was Chris Moneymaker, which honestly is a fact that everyone should always be laughing about all the time. Moneymaker inspired lots of folks to give online poker a shot. One of these folks was my friend Johnny. He started playing here and there for fun, and he was good at it. And he got better at it once he started using poker software, which was allowed by most poker sites. This is how it works. The software would record what the other players at the table were doing. 
when they tended to fold, when they tended to raise, what they ended up having when they showed their cards. If you were at a table with Johnny, he would see a little overlay above your name with a complete readout of your stats, and he'd play you accordingly. Johnny tended to play at small stakes tables, where the big blind was two bucks. It's hard to make a lot of money that way, so Johnny found a solution. He played in dozens of games. At the same time. When he was really on a roll, this is what his computer screen would look like. He'd have up to 24 little poker windows neatly tiled up, and he'd divide his attention between all of them. He describes the experience as robotic. He estimates that he immediately folded about 80% of his hands. With this many games going, he had the luxury of waiting around for the hands he really wanted to play. When he found one, and the stats looked good, he pulled the trigger. And it made him money. He quit his job to play full time, and actually made more money than he did at his old job. For seven hours a day, five days a week, this was his life. Johnny played about 1,200 hands an hour by his estimate. He played for five years, so that's more than 10 million hands. Some days were scary. A few times he lost thousands of dollars in a single day. But on the whole, this was working. He was reliably making a living from online poker. It was kind of amazing. On April 15th, 2011, I was scrolling through Facebook. I saw a status from Johnny. The FBI, the Department of Justice, have shut down three of the biggest online gambling sites in the United States. Without warning, Johnny's source of income disappeared. It was just gone. He thought about playing professionally at the casino, but compared to online poker, it's just so agonizingly slow. For a second, he and his wife even considered moving out of the country. But ultimately, he decided to re-enter the workforce and get a, in his words, real job. The dream was dead. So, I feel like some of y'all might not approve of the way Johnny made his money. Uh, I have two responses to that. First, if you find a way to make money by having fun, don't pass it up, ever. Second, uh, it's not like you're working that hard because you're watching YouTube at work right now. Chapter 4. Why do I let this upset me? What the fuck? I feel bad for you, Phil. That's disgusting. Flap the full house. Meet Phil Helmuth. Phil has a problem. See, Phil is one of the most successful poker players who has ever lived. But if you listen to him, you'd get the exact opposite impression. And I'm out. Fours and fives and sevens and eights and nines. I flopped a full house. And I'm out. You're so sick. Can I even play in this game? I mean, what the f They find off. I mean, what the f Give the amateur an offsuit. Idiot player. It's like I just get cheated. I mean, Real and maybe fourth best hand. You can raise with ace. And put him on that. And we can destroy me so far. There's no clue on this. I'll say that. King? Is this is some kind of joke. I raised 3,000. Man, moronic players are the worst players. Where are these? Cards coming from? Called a race with a <laughs> I find this so weird. There's way more luck involved than there is in like any other sport. You would think that if you signed yourself up to play this sport for decades and become a student and later a master of it, like you would understand this so well. And this is the sport that Phil keeps choosing. And it keeps doing this to him, and he keeps coming back and keeps like being somehow surprised that it doesn't always go his way. It's so weird. It's like, it's like he understands it, but he doesn't get it. Phil's most well-known explosion probably occurred during the 2008 World Series of Poker. Across the table, Christian Dragomir, a relatively unknown player, raises despite having complete trash in his hand. Helmuth, who has ace-king, re-raises big time. Dragomir really shouldn't call him here, but he's clearly here to gamble, so he calls. The flop comes. Dragomir's shitty hand suddenly looks a lot better. He's got top pair. He bets big. Phil hates it. This idiot guy over here. That was uncalled for. I think he called a re rush with Ace Queen or something. He's just a crazy guy trying to go vote. Oh, Phil. My man, it was a lot worse than that. Show him the 3 8 offsuit or something. Oh, 
10 4, baby. This is how I lose my money to some idiot. You know what's weird is I don't really even feel annoyed or angered by players like Phil. I feel something that's probably a lot more insulting. Buddy, you're an idiot. This is. I feel genuine pity. Someone puts in four hundred thousand dollars with ten four, and the crowd celebrates like it's a good play. This is the state of poker. The guy is the worst player in history. I see a man who somehow can't retain the knowledge that he's powerless. Did you see what this idiot just did? I see the endless relearning of a sad lesson. I see a lawnmower that won't start. I apologize, but I don't like the way you play poker. I see the bully. You know the bully from second grade who always messed around with you? That's all. Whatever. That's I don't all I say. You I won't say anything I don't you. I don't... Pulled the chair out from under you before you sat down, threw the kickball at your face. She's such an asshole to you. Why you feel way out of line here? The worst player around. And then later you're sitting at lunch with your friends and you look over and see him eating at a lunch table all by himself. You won't last ten minutes tomorrow, I don't think. He sucked out on you, but okay, it's poker. It's poker. Just... Him by himself, his little legs hanging slack off the stool, his little lunchbox open, and your heart just hits the fucking floor. To you it's poker, man. To me this is my life. Chapter 5. Why don't I just embrace chaos? We've seen all these stories of people who give this game everything they've got. They anguish over tough calls, they faithfully and meticulously calculate their moves, they play the best poker they can, and poker does not care about any of it. Any other sport will reward your sacrifice. Sometimes it seems like poker just doesn't give a shit about you. Maybe we're all overthinking this. Meet Gus Hansen. So it's the third season of Poker Superstars, the very last match before the playoffs. Antonio Esfandiari and Phil Hellmuth, hey Phil, what's up Phil, they already have playoff berths. Freddie Deeb needs to finish at least fourth out of six to make the playoffs. Phil Ivey needs to finish third. Chris Moneymaker needs second place, and Gus Hansen needs to win the entire table. So clearly these players are incentivized to play in different ways. Some are playing to win, others are happy to just hang back and make sure they don't finish last. In this particular scenario, Gus Hansen adopts a strategy that in any other situation would be completely fucking crazy. It's the first hand. Gus gets 9-2 offsuit, which are just about the worst cards you could possibly be dealt. Gus doesn't know this because he doesn't even bother to look at his cards. He immediately bets all in and everyone folds. And then Gus tells everyone he's going to do the same thing again. Am I allowed to come with friendly advice? Don't try to raise my blind. Fold, 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 fold. Oops. They, they listened. Again, Gus doesn't bother to look at his cards until he's won. And he does with 10-2, another couple of terrible cards he didn't even bother to look at. Phil doesn't like this at all. He's getting cranky. Now how about some friendly advice? Don't raise my blind either. Enhancement in this tournament. Gus doesn't really care. I don't really care. But Phil stands up to him. I don't know what I have. <laughs> He had a deuce. Wow, he didn't even look at his cards. I didn't do. Interesting hand. So here we've got Phil, who made a calculated move against Gus, who had no idea what his cards even were. You want to guess who wins? The flop. And there's a deuce for Hanson. That's actually a good flop. No five on the river. What happened? I mean, Gus, Gus made a bad play. Okay, Phil, I know this is cheap, and I know this isn't what you mean, but... He actually made a really good play. So Gus has knocked one guy out of the game. Four more to go. All in, everyone folds. All in, everyone folds. All in, everyone folds. The second place finish. Oh, that was my best. He holds the tiebreaker. All in, everyone folds. Worked again. This time, Gus is last to act. Sadly, he doesn't even get to go all in because everyone just folds before it even gets to him. They are having none of this shit. So, Moneymaker knows Hansen isn't even looking at his cards. Moneymaker is dealt ace 10, and he decides that this is a good time to make his move. It's a great call. Moneymaker has an 85% chance of winning. He just needs to dodge a 7. Hansen's gonna need two spades or a 7 somewhere along the way. There's the 7! Oh my! And Moneymaker's gone because poker is stupid. And now it's Esfandiari's turn. He goes all in against Gus, and he has him even more dominated. With one card left to be dealt, Gus has only a 5% chance of winning. 
but he can at least tie if he hits a miracle 10. And there it is! Gus is worried that not winning a hand is against the rules. Is that okay to have a tie in there? Gus is my favorite. He is a pretty big chip lead by this point, so he can afford to at least look at his cards and play like a normal human, right? Nope! All in, everyone folds. All in, everyone well, folds. I'm as Fandiari and Deeb start snipping at each other. And you told me I was a donkey, is what you did. You're calling you said, why are you playing like this? You're calling yourself a donkey. I didn't call you a donkey. You're telling me you don't know, you know, you're telling the people on the rail what I'm doing, this and that. Let's just you know. all be friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Gus? You're kind of a dick. And now it's Freddy Deeb's turn. I'm a For the third time, it. someone goes all in as the odds on favorite against well, right Gus. Now, Gus. And he's gone. Every chance he's had, Gus has gambled everything he's had without even looking at his cards. And he hasn't even lost once. Hey, okay, so bear with me for just a second here. Let's just pretend these guys were rolling dice instead of playing poker, and Gus won every time he rolled a six. His odds of winning one, of course, would be one in six. To do that twice in a row, one in 36. Three times in a row, one in 216. We're already in pretty unlikely territory. Four times in a row, the math gets a little more friendly since Phil's knocked out and there are only five guys at the table, but still, one in 1,080, five in a row, one in 5,400, six in a row, one in 27,000, seven, one in 135,000, eight, one in 675,000, nine, one in 3,375,000. The odds of him winning 12 out of 13 times, as he did in that game, are one in 8,228,589. So that's one on his side. How do you account for the other 8,228,588? Well, Gus Hansen bridged that gap by taking advantage of a tournament format and not giving a shit. Gus refused to acknowledge the odds, and the odds disappeared. Gus went on to win the match and make the playoffs. It only took him 22 hands. There were 19 hands in which he had the opportunity to go all in, and he did so in 15 of those. It was, uh, it was fun. The lesson that I've chosen to learn here is that if you play poker, the secret is to just do whatever you want because there is no such thing as decisions. The way you end up playing is the only way you could possibly have ever played. This hand is just the next stop on a train that's been running for four billion years ever since life bubbled out of a simmering puddle of acid. You could stick a thermometer in that puddle, give it a read, and know whether four billion years later, and now on the river, only a queen would knock Matisal out of the main event. You'll run into a queen. It is a queen! No! 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 Why do I get deserve this? <laughs> I, mean, the best, I play the best poker in my life, man. Why do I have to choose this for a living? I gotta be the okay, sickest man. person in the whole entire universe. Damn. How does that happen to somebody? I'm happy. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Dang it. <laughs>